Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Yo, yo. Ah, Mookie. What's up, bro? <laughs> and we back. Love a dog reaction video. Mookie. Yeah. The Rugby World Cup is the day, bro. Yes, sir. The Rugby World Cup is the day. And yes, I know sir. our last video, bro, we was asking about the breakdown, like the right, contest right. of it. How far do the legacy go back and uh, everything, bro. You feel me? So I found a great video due to a YouTuber that I seen watch it, bro. Right. South Africa versus New Zealand. John Smith breakdowns the Rugby World Cup final. Okay. So this guy, John Smith, he must be popular. Please let us know the context on this John guy. John Smith. Yeah, I'm sorry. John Smith. And if y'all new to the channel, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, bro. Yes, sir. And make sure y'all tune in today. We rock with South Africa, baby. Spring box. Box what? nation. Mooty. Man, let's get straight into the video, bro. Great John Smith, 2007 World Cup winning captain. You already heard him. Yeah, World yeah. Cup winning captain. Okay, okay. Get a little info on this guy. Hello. Hello, Jim. How are you? I'm very good. Did yeah. you genuinely think before the tournament started that your South African team would be in the final yet again, in a position to win four World Cups and go back to back? Uh, I knew they had built themselves up to being a team that could go back to back, but then you look at the pathway of what it would take for them to get there and there's, there's a lot, I had to, they had to play, it wasn't really an easy fixture. So I mean, you take it Saturday is just this, this, the sixth team in the top six they've played. Um, and they really have been incredible the last two weekends at an intensity level that's massive, but I did call them into the final um, and I did it I called the All Blacks as well, but really just to irritate all the Northern Hemisphere guys. <laughs> I didn't think that they actually would the get laugh. there. <laughs> the last lap as well. It is for us the ultimate final to play. We haven't played a final like this since 95. Mm. Wow. The iconic 95. Exactly, yes. And 95 was a pretty special day for South Africa, let alone the Springbok team. So, And we've seen how much the Springboks effect on South Africa has escalated over the years. And I think purely just because the team's transformed as well. You know, we've came from a difficult period in, in, in pre-95 into now it's a team led for the first time by a black African Sia wow. uh, with our stars being of all shapes and sizes. They said they led by what? A black, I think he's the first black uh, 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 captain. Co Oh, 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 he like, might be a coach. Okay, hold on, let, let me let me hear that again. Colors and colors and you see. See, he looked like now a player. A team led for the first time by a black African, Sia Khaleesi. Uh, oh, yeah, with our stars. yeah, so he had played like basically led by them. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Being of all shapes and sizes and colors and languages and, and cultures and religions. Crazy eyes. <laughs> What's up, man? They love him. Go, that, man. He he go. The best enforcer in rugby. <laughs> So it's, um, it's, it's a game that is followed by so many more now today in South Africa than it was back in 95. Let's go back and talk about how difficult this run to the final, this road to the final has been mm. in yeah. South Africa. Is this the hardest path any team has had to the w final? Without a doubt. Right. And um, should they go and go the distance and win and be back-to-back -back winners, I don't think there's an, I don't think you could orchestrate a more difficult pathway. Right. You've just touched on it, but that's sort of my worry about this weekend is, you know, can they, can they, I mean, can they get there three weekends in a row to that intensity, that kind of physicality? The All Blacks had an even easier runabout on Ooh. the weekend um, and an extra day of recovery. So those are the things that do worry me around South Africa, but every time, and I guess I, I'm always nervous because I'm an ex-player and, and of how much it means to us. But every time you doubt these guys, they just find something. They come up with something. Sia and that team is, is just a bit incredibly good at delivering when it counts most. So um, I'm certainly I'm biased, but it's very hard to write them off, no matter how difficult the situation is. Just give people a sense of the emotional build-up to these games. Can you just explain what it means, like, 
to get to that emotional level and how difficult it is to do it week on week and what South Africa have had to do? So I reckon the only way to really make people understand was is it's like the Hunger Games. Mm. You start off with 20 and it's life and death. Mm. And it, it's not like, that, it's not, that is not the reality, but it is our reality as players, Jim. When you get into a World Cup, you start with 20 and you literally have to kill beat. off everyone around you. Yeah, you got to beat all so them. The way you do that. Look like saying like the, uh, the Marsh Madness, bro. Yeah, oh yeah. And the, um, the All Blacks in South Africa, bro, they get it. They, it's just the vibe feel like. When right, I listen like to legendary them. baby, like yeah. the Celtics and, and the Lakers. I'm about yeah. to say that. You legendary took the words out of my mouth, yo. <laughs> you feel me? It goes Real back, good. bro. Right. So this game means so much, bro. And mm -hmm. um the South African fans that we got in the comment session, bro, they want it so bad, bro. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Like the actual people that just been there, bro. And we've been rocking with South Africa for a little bit it now. Right. Bro, and when they lost to Ireland, mm -hmm. I was like, hold on. I thought they was about to get put out, but they also, that was in their group. You feel me? They get right. a chance, bro. So for them to make it to the championship, bro, and we just first sent it was just like truly incredible. Crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. Super crazy. That from an emotional point of view or a physical point of view differs, you know, but for South Africa, we are, I would guess, that brutally big physical opponent that's gonna uh, smash and thump every competitor in the Hunger Games mm -hmm. until they go away. We, 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 that's the only way we really get to the top. Um, and now to, to reach that emotionally is every Saturday or every Friday or every Sunday, you've got to come up with that, that same mentality, that same emotional commitment to all the narratives that follow a Springback all over the, all over the place. It's okay. about how much it means, not just to the team. Actually, the team becomes, and, and the team's, um, ambitions actually feature very little in a Springboks motivation during wow. a weekend. It's all about families and what they've sacrificed, mm. people and what they don't have and what they go through back home, and then the hope of what that victory brings. And so there's quite a huge amount on your shoulders. I mean, people always ask me, what, what was my emotional state when the whistle went in 2007? I was relieved, <laughs> honestly. I couldn't be happy. I mean, Alan Rulon was the first guy there. I hugged him. It didn't look good. I hugged the referee. But I was, I was unbelievably relieved that the weight of the, of the world, which it felt like at the time, had come off my shoulders because right. we managed to pull it through. Rugby is life it in is. your country. <laughs> it is life. And it's, I can tell you, it's almost it's a borderline cult. Um, mm. and, and I'll say it openly and, uh, and proudly. I mean, our South African supporters are of the worst in the world. They are unbelievably... Uh, brash winners and unbelievably miserable losers. <laughs> but purely because the only way to explain it is if you've got some experience of South Africa, the most beautiful place to live. There's yet so much that's going wrong and you know, load shedding and lack of water and all crime and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. So you deal with these challenges all the time. Everything in the country. But on Saturday at 3... What'd you say? No, he's talking about all the hardships that are in South Africa, right. you know what I'm saying? The crime, is, uh. I think he said the water and stuff like that. But to still, you know, come together and proceed forward and be the best you can be, you can give, like, a country hope like that, bro. Right, yeah, that's what just I by, Just by belonging, you know, to a team like the Springboks, you can give uh, all of South Africa hope. Bro. You know what I'm saying? And it's just a wonderful feel. I was about to say that, bro. It's just amazing how um, they all come together doing something like this, all the negative that's going on, and the focus on something so positive mm -hmm. and just move forward. And I'm just getting like, this guy basically saying like, yo, it's so deep, bro. Mm -hmm. Like It's just not rugby to them. Like yeah. how sports is in America. It's just a sport, but you already know that, bro. Yeah. It's way deeper, bro. They right, fight right, right. for a different purpose. 3 p.m. or 5 p.m., you get to open up a beer or a brandy. <laughs> and and just enjoy what has been one of the best teams in the world for the last five years, hopefully beating another nation that has so much more than what we've got. And for two or three days after that, you float above all the, all the mayhem. Would you say the All Blacks are the best team to have ever played rugby? When you look at their yeah. record, three World Cups, wow. I think I saw something, they'd won 20 
championships, what was Tri-Nations, yeah. the best team ever? Absolutely. And, and i tell you why I said that with confidence is because Andy Ellis asked me around, what makes this rivalry? And, mm -hmm. I, and, and Victor actually answered the question. He said, it's because they're the one team that beat us more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it count. If you take the last 20 years and you look at the world rankings, who's held number one position for the most? It's easily New Zealand as well. Mm. Do you have that relationship after, that respect? Uh, I think that's the most beautiful thing about this uh, rivalry is that we do, we smash each other for 80 minutes. <laughs> and they're the first team that'll come into the change room, take a beer, swap shirts, sit down, catch up, talk about your family, see what's happening. They really are incredible in, in, in every sense. And the easiest blokes to get on. You've interviewed yeah. hundreds of them and you've come across them, Jim. Um, it's, it's almost weird and I think people probably see South Africans in a similar way but you see a South African play a game of rugby and you think that he was built for violent crime mm -hmm. and then you, you meet him and he's, he's got the smile and he's keen to buy you a beer and catch mm. up and ask what's going on and, and the All Blacks are exactly the same they play this, this ice cold attacking beautiful game of rugby right. that is ruthless and yet the nicest guys that are soft-spoken, humble, off the field. And I think that's where the respect comes, is that mm. we, we really go hammer and tongue for 80 minutes, but... That's one thing you could say about both clubs too. They truly respect each other. Yeah. Truly. Yep. It's the way we treat each other afterwards that's a complete contrast to the 80 minutes of rugby, which I think <laughs> makes the difference between this, this rivalry. <laughs> My bad was that. I ain't gonna lie, man. At the... At I lose the Rugby World Cup, mm -hmm. all that humble, all that nice stuff go out the window for me, yo. No, I'm just sad. I'm going to be mad. I'm going to be hurt. This is a me shit. <laughs> what you think, yo? No, I mean, yeah, you'll be hurt, but this is a championship. But, like, I, I compare it to, um, to say, like, a simple, you know, fist fight. Mm. Yeah. Sometimes words can't solve what a simple fight can solve. You, you know what I'm saying? Cause if I lose, if I if I get out on the the pitch, the field, or whatever, mm. if I get out on if I get out there and I give it all that I got, right, a really good run, yeah, I, I is 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 nothing to be mad about. You know what I'm saying? I got it. For number one, the other team is gonna respect me, right. And number two, it was it it is it, nothing left that I can. There's nothing left in my mind for me to regret. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I gave it everything I got. It, sometimes you just reach a, a, a better understanding. Like I said, any given Sunday in American football, I guess today is any given Saturday. Oh, Whoever yeah. bring it the hardest, that's what's going to win. Yeah. Respect. If you win at the weekend, does that shift from the All Blacks being the greatest team to South Africa being the greatest team. Just having that uh, number four World Cup, uh, having gone back to back like the All Blacks did in 2011, 2015, does that give you that mantle of like, the, the Springboks are the greatest? Another world title certainly doesn't make us have more weeks at number one over the last 20 years, mm -hmm. but it does. Whoever takes that fourth title on the weekend does get to hold on to that mantle for a for, for a while. Okay, is, so so do New Zealand got three World Cups? Because I know South Africa got three World Cups. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You feel me? Hold and on. South bro. Africa won it, won it again, won it last year. Let me, let me, let me see, just to make sure, bro. Because I don't want to um be wrong. Outside of your city, living good, and I cut this out, bro. Let me see. Many World Cups. New Zealand, all blacks. No. Oh yeah, bro. What? They both got three. It's the tiebreaker. <laughs> wow, family. It's the tiebreaker. <laughs> oh yo, this is this rugby match really gonna be crazy though. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Something special, it's certainly something the guys want to chase, um, and it, it will make a massive difference. Sam Whitelock, mm. he will go down as maybe the greatest, maybe the greatest. Mm. Three World Cups. Imagine. Yeah, that is that is mm -hmm. some feat because 
I think people don't understand what it's like to get to 50 tests, let alone 150 odd tests. And so for the All Blacks as well, it's All not Blacks. as if it's yeah, it's not no, like he's up respect. against mediocre. I mean, there was a lovely clip. I think it was a Crusaders clip that he did. So I'm going to help you to the new guys coming into the team, but I'm not going to give you my shirt easily. You know, and I think that's sort of what makes a great player. They uh, mentor, they put the armor around youngsters, but they don't give up easy. Outside looking in, how important is Rassi? Yeah. to the Springbok team. Look, he's, I think he does have a different role. And I think director of rugby is something mm -hmm. that didn't exist when he was the coach for the first uh, World Cup cycle. Um, and so now, and he was always a director of rugby who came, who changed to a head coach for the last World Cup. I, I find it fascinating why there needs to be this complete understanding of who's in charge, you know, this sort of hierarchical, who's the biggest ego. I genuinely don't think Rassi and Jacques care who thinks who's in charge and who makes which calls, because I think the two of them balance each other out pretty well. Mm -hmm. Do you think we've seen the greatest tournament we've ever seen? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You do? Yeah. Just a sim just quick, quick it's as that. Just, Why? It's just, I think the last one was the best one, until this one. <laughs> yeah. Because I think of the lopsided differences on the two sides and just how difficult the one side was and, and how many unbelievably big clashes you saw. So right. I, I do believe that the quality of the rugby has been better across the board. We've seen a team like Portugal come in here, uh, uh, snatching a late entry by beating uh, um, the US, but actually delivering something pretty special. So across the board, I think the rugby's been better. So for me, without a doubt, our best rugby World Cup, and it's a great sign for the game. Mm. Mm. Would you say the Portugal is the greatest story <laughs> to come out, a side uh, story? Yeah. As it were. Yeah, a wonderful story. To see them win and having created some relationships with them mm. uh, and what it means to them, I, I really think that this will motivate them to put, a, put in a little bit more wow. to make right. this team a little bit more competitive for the next cycle. Right, that's so Portugal must have been like an underdog team. Had to be. Mm -hmm. Had to be. Finish off, we'll look at the game. South Africa, to give themselves a chance and make it more than 50, needs to find a way to come up I mean, the motivation is not there. I mean, as a captain in 2007, I didn't have to say much. You, you don't really have to motivate someone in a World Cup final. But, but it's around being able to get yourself up there mentally from an intensity point of view and, and how, how fast they can do that. Because I think what hurt them against England is that England played the game and the conditions perfectly, but got in, into the scoreboard early. And that rattled them. They weren't quite there in that mm. first 20 minutes. Mm. First 20 minutes for South Africa will be of utmost importance on Saturday because they they do not they do not want to go in at half time mm -hmm. 10, 12 points behind an all black team mm -hmm. and then I can tell you what else the South Africa doesn't want them to do it either they don't want to hold on for that last minute penalty kick <laughs> I think we're filling up the hospitals with cardiac arrest at the moment because <laughs> but they they have to find a way and then the other thing we have to hope for is that physically they can maintain that for 80 minutes you know, it's one thing to throw your body in there and and I think we've seen probably the best Evan Etzebeth over the last seven weeks. You know, he's going to play a big role. Um, I think Sia's yeah, going to play a big role. Yes, sir. Um, mm -hmm. In terms yeah. of his physical contribution as well. And so... They're the key players. I, I just... I, I get that feeling. I get that feeling because when the two of them go, the rest go. I've almost felt throughout my career, Jim, you're on the bench. Not quite good enough to start. You lads have completely flipped that. They have made a massive difference. I think the cool thing about Rassi is that he's, he keeps on switching things up. And, and you, you're right, when we got put on the bench, it was like, you've missed a few lineouts or you've missed a few tackles and you know, it's sort of teaching a lesson. Now, Rassi's coaching staff have turned the bench into the bomb squad, which is this cool thing. Almost, you're almost hoping to be selected from 16 down. Mm. You know, because you and I are going to be the saving grace of the Springbok team on the weekend, which I think is genius. And it actually, it has come to fruition. Whether mm. by design or by default, I have no idea. But it is a massive, massive positive for South Africa. We rely heavily on that bench. Wow. And you talk about Kwaka. I mean, the other guy that's made an unbelievable difference is Dion Fari. Fari, eight years old. How old is he? 38. Oh, yeah. mm. and not that he doesn't look 38, but uh, 38. And playing a sport like that at 38, bro. Woo, woo. It's not mm -hmm. basketball. People don't play that. People don't play that type of sport in football, yeah, do they? American football. Yeah. Not until they're 38. I don't know. No. So. No. No. Oh, they bones again. Like, look oh, at my man. man. He do look young. That's crazy, bro. <laughs>
the power that he's still and, got. And uh, there can't be a more destructive scrummager in the world at the moment than Oxenshare. Right. Yeah. We, I mean, we, and we, four years ago, we had the beast tearing it up. So we got rid of the beast and we got an ox. Mm. Confident? Nah, never, never overly confident against the All Blacks. Always hopeful. Oh. Okay. What does it do to your country if they go back to back? Does it change much or does it just cement and really nail in the foundations that the Springboks are the greatest team right now? I think the reality is it, it won't change any of the things that make life challenging back home, but it will make life a hell of a lot more bearable. Mm. And another thing that rugby does is it galvanises us. We, we, we have to be one of the most diverse countries in the world with so many differences across the board. And as a young democracy, there's only been one thing since we became a democracy in 94 that has okay. been able to galvanise us, bring us together, give and us hope, a democracy drink beer together, Shout and scream at televisions with gay abandon, and that's the Springboks. Mm. It is the one thing that's continued to bring help. I can't think of anything else that has done as much yes, to unite <laughs> the country than the Springboks. And we've been going a long time, since 1994. So there's a huge responsibility on them, um, and they know that as well. And I, and I think you've also seen the narrative. They, they work that narrative. They, they remind themselves of it all the time. And so they're not playing for themselves. They're playing for something much bigger. I told you, boy. The great, mm. the powerful John Smith. <laughs> not so sure about powerful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Very humble, insane. bro. Very insane. You got to be humble, bro. So humble, bro. Be like, humble. yo, you can't. Yo, Respect you your opponent and go out there and give it all you got. You cannot not feel this, yo. Like, yeah. hey, I feel you like. i be humble, baby. Oh. Hey, right, this was a truly amazing breakdown, bro. And for us to even tap into a little bit more deeper right. of how South I just South Africa feel, mm -hmm. what it's about, you yep. feel me? Overall in the video, bro, what you think? I think it was a great video. You know what I mean? Great mm -hmm. video. Uh very, very insightful. Right. Um, you know what I mean? Both teams have respect for each other. And right. everything like that. That's what makes it a great game when both teams have respect for each other, bro. Right. Because they take it out and they just want to prove. Only thing is there to prove is who's the best Ooh. at this sport. You right. Know what I'm saying? And they both can go out there and really play their yeah. hearts out, bro. Yeah. Truly amazing, man. South Bay, I mean, amazing. the Springboks just not playing for the players. They also playing for the country. So, right. You know. Well, look, man, this video was truly amazing, man. We love y'all. We appreciate y'all, man. The World Cup is today. Today. I'm Nick Dunson. And I'm Mookie Dunson. And we out, baby. One.